Hello YouTube, I'm Toby, and today we're taking a look at the NVIDIA GTX 275. Now this card is from 2009, making it 8 years old, uh, as of writing this, of course. Um, I have some questions, and uh, those are, does such an old car still pack a punch today? And is it even worth uh, considering uh, to buy this old car? Now these are the questions I'll try to answer today. And before we get into the benchmarking part of this video, let's just uh, first learn a little about a little bit about it. The card was introduced in April of 2009. It has 240 CUDA cores. It supports up to uh, DirectX 10 and OpenGL 3.0, although one side said 3.3. VRAM uh, is just 896 megabytes. Uh, it can, however, utilize system RAM to bump this up a notch. I, I experienced this in the uh, during my benchmarking. The TDP of this card is 219 watts, so not a very efficient card by today's standard. Um, this also means that the recommended power supply should be 550 watts minimum, and you will need s two six-pin uh, power connectors to uh, run this card. On to benchmarking. Uh, I started using a uh, Fermark uh, preset 720p this card actually ran quite well and we ended with a score of 1430 points. On to the Resident Evil 6 benchmarking tool. This test also ran very well, although it seemed to throttle towards the end. Uh, we ended with a score of 7310, which renders the game playable. Counter-Strike Source also has a built-in benchmarking tool. Uh, I ran this at high settings and got 292 frames per second. And of course, what benchmark is complete without a Counter-Strike Global Offensive benchmark? The game ran at high settings and yielded between 100 and 200 frames per second. Uh, this seems to be quite unstable, but it, I felt no uh, frame drop, so it's definitely playable. Last, I tested Subnautica. Uh, the average FPS seemed to be around 50. Uh, it would hover around 40 in more demanding areas and in the 60s around uh, less demanding areas. So does this card still pack a punch? Yes, I would definitely say it does. Uh, that being said, it will not be able to play everything, of course. When it comes to whether or not uh, it's worth buying, I have to say that depends on the price. Uh, from what I could find online, this card will cost you around uh, 80 US dollars uh, new. I personally got this in a cheap bottle bundle of uh, hardware. But if you can find it cheap and plan on building an esports gaming system, then I'll have to say that this card uh, does deserve your consideration. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for uh, watching.